One of my areas, it was called Apas, and it was just down the road from the temple. So it was kind of in the middle of the Cebu city stake, um, right in the middle of the city. Apas was, it was actually a pretty area. It was kind of the city situated on the mountain, on the hills. So you had just kind of these concrete jungles set up against big mountains and big hills. So every day you wake up, that area you they have transportation, they have a lot of jeepneys going around, but for most of the times when you're working, you're on those mountain sides. So you have just steps. So many steps. I remember just sweating because, you know, you're visiting someone that lives at the top of this mountain, and so you just walk straight up in this kind of concrete jungle feel, straight up the mountain, hundreds of steps, and it, you know, there's little, there's just houses and people everywhere, and it's it's different. It's a different experience than or a different kind of place than anywhere I'd been before, but it's really cool. It's also a cool place there's it's amazing how how people just I mean, like the rural areas, they just find ways to live. I mean, they kind of are living on top of each other sometimes. There's a lot of people in and out in the cities, so they don't really know their neighbors, but they all coexist, they find work, they find jobs. In the city you have a lot more, you have young people who work at call centers, you'll have a lot more just business things, people selling their food, selling whatever. You know, they'll walk around the streets and they'll yell out like, Balut ista! Just whatever they're selling for the day. And a lot more buildings, a lot more people, but still kind of the same culture and the same people, which is what I love. <laughs> the Philippines actually is uh, you know, I was kind of scared, like, oh, just going to this different country. It is, I always felt so safe, even in, you know, the middle of the cities where you have people everywhere around you or in the middle of mountains where there's no one, around, no one by your side. I really felt safe and at home for most of my mission. A lot of missionaries worry about that. And the Philippines, I mean, like any country, any place you go, there's, there's going to be crime, there's going to be things, but it really... The Philippines are a loving, Filipinos are a loving people. They don't, I never, you know, got mugged or anything. I never had problems with any of that. I usually just felt very, very loved and at home, um, which is another attribute of the Filipino people that I love. Uh, as far as Cebu City, one thing I guess that's interesting, it's becoming, if you're in the city, you'll see a lot of younger people who are really good at English. And a booming industry in Cebu City right now is call centers. So a lot of times if you're here in America, if you, you know, if you're going to the mission in the Philippines and you want to try speaking a language, just <laughs> call a company. And there's a good chance, I've talked to several call center representatives that are from the Philippines. And so they have these new developments that it's tall buildings just filled with call centers. And it's an interesting culture because they're usually kind of alive at nighttime when everyone else is asleep because that's when we're awake in America. So you get a lot of people during the day and it doesn't stop. All through the night you have a lot going on in Cebu City because you have these call centers that 24-7 are always going. So that's kind of something interesting most people probably wouldn't <laughs> realize about Cebu City but a lot of young very good English speakers in Cebu City. In Cebu you'll speak and in Negros in the Cebu mission you'll speak Cebuano. Um, people are good at English they most everyone can speak English to you they can understand a little bit but really if you want to be able to connect with them and to teach them effectively you're going to be speaking Bisaya is what they call it there most of the time, the Bisayan language. So that's something to know a lot of people think our missionaries might get into, get used to speaking English a lot, but everyone there speaks Cebuano, and if you really want to be effective, you are going to want to try to master the language. And it's a fun language. It's a really unique, but a really cool language to learn. The southern, kind of middle southern region of the Philippines is called the Visayan region of the Philippines, and all of that region, they speak a pretty similar language, which is kind of why it's called Bisaya, or the Bisayan language. Cebuano is technically that dialect of that language that's spoken on Cebu. So Cebuano, that's where you get the Cebuano from. So if you're on Cebu, technically they're speaking the pure Cebuano, but in the mission you're generally going to refer to it as the Bisayan language, or Bisaya, is kind of how they say it. So it's pretty much the same thing, it just depends on how you're specifying it, I guess.
the weather they have a wet season and a dry season everybody hears about that and the wet season is wet and they also have like a typhoon season the wet season's wet that's a really good line but it is so like it just you're walking and then all of a sudden you're like oh look it's dark clouds and then they're over you and it just dumps like you've never seen that kind of rain in utah ever and it's just like you can't possibly stay dry you're like huddled underneath your umbrella and the wind's blowing sometimes and you're just you're just soaked and they wear like crocs in the puddles because otherwise your feet just get disgusting in normal shoes um and then the dry season's really hot i prefer wet season but the wet season will also be like hot and like the beginning of the day and then the end of the day like the rain will come so that's fun but then you hit the winter the winter's nice the winter's like 80s 90s at night it's like 70 or 60 and there's no rain it's dry as a bone so i really like the the winter as for safety i think a lot of people think it's so dangerous in the philippines i never felt threatened <laughs> there was there would be like guys, we got followed a couple times, but it's like nobody pulled a knife on us or anything because they're all like five foot two and I'm five ten, so <laughs> I was never scared of anyone. They put me with little tiny companions, but like we would hear about murderers or whatever in a certain barangay, which a barangay is like kind of like a neighborhood sort of thing. And but we never, I never felt threatened. We'd go in at eight. Everyone goes to bed at like seven, six, seven is when everybody starts closing up shop. Um, so we would eat, actually eat not during the day, but after we did our dinner after the day, but we got followed one time We were like on a dirt road and I was on exchanges with a sister and There was a guy on his motorcycle and we're on this little dirt path in the middle of nowhere So it's not exactly very safe, but we're just like walking down and the sister's like this guy's following us And I'm like, no, I think we're good sister. We're gonna be all right five minutes later He's still like trailing behind like 30 feet behind on his motorcycle and she's like sister I'm gonna start running. And I was like, no, we don't run <laughs> So I turned around and I was like, what do you want? And I was like, can I help you? I think I was nicer at first I was like, hey, how are you? And he just pulled out his phone and he acts like he has somebody to talk to and I was like Okay, yeah, right. He was so flustered and then I asked him again, I was like, what do you need? And he just took off on his motorcycle. But it was no big deal. <laughs> like, they're all little tiny little Filipino men. Like, it was a rare thing if I found someone taller than me. So, I don't know. I never felt threatened. They're all so kind. People are just like, you're walking down the street and they say, Gabina, sisters, which means like, it's night now. Basically, go home. It's not safe. But I never had any problems, so... I've, when I first got to the Philippines, we call it the palace was our apartment. They had four sisters in the top four in the bottom, a senior couple, and then like a random couple up here with a really mean dog. But our apartment was so nice. It was probably like three or four times the size of this room, but it was so nice. <laughs> it had like sinks and it had an oven. We never use the oven. We don't have like money to pay for like the energy for the oven, but, and it even had a shower. It was so nice. And then... We got, we went to my second area and the APs drove us out to Dingaras, which was like my favorite area. And they drop us off and we were whitewashing an area, which means they pull out all the previous elders or sisters, whoever, and they put in all new ones. So we're whitewashing this area <laughs> and we like open the door to the apartment. And we're like, well, this is kind of small. And this apartment was probably only like two of these rooms. It was so tiny and it had a fridge and we walked in and there's like a dead cockroach on the floor. And we're like, oh, and we go and we look at the stove and they just had like a Bunsen burner thing. And there's this moldy pot. <laughs> the elders did a great job taking care of this apartment. There's a moldy pot of rice on the stove and rice just it smells terrible after two days and we opened up the fridge and they've got like a half-eaten cake and pineapple and there's mothballs all over the floor and they don't have anywhere to put your food so you just like stack it on the table and we went in the room and there's like spiders and cockroaches we'd get in there but it was fine i was like very ungrateful i tell you i was ungrateful and then we just came to love this apartment my companion would always say like she's like it's great we don't have to clean as much on p days so it was good. I loved it being small. We went back to a big apartment and I missed our small little Dingress apartment. We had a lot of fun. We just blast our church music on our speakers and stuff, but it was good. And then for transportation, we would usually take trices if it's like close, which is just the motorcycle and the sidecar. And sometimes you would just, if the sidecar was full and there was someone already in there, you just pack onto the back. So you have this trizy that has like four people crammed in this 
area meant for like two normal sized people. And then on the back you have the driver and maybe his child on the front. And then another two or three people on the back of the tricy. And so that was fun. Honestly, it was fun. You're just like holding on for your life, hoping you don't fall off and die. <laughs> but um, I love tricies, especially sitting on the back. Like life couldn't get any better than sitting on the back of a tricy. I love tricy rides. There's nothing funner. And then we would ride jeepneys to anywhere that was like over 15, 20 minutes away. You could take a tricy, but it's way expensive. Which a jeepney is like, it's like this giant silver kind of car like a bus it's like an SUV almost and it has just like benches on this side and a bench on this side and they cram you in like sardines and like a lot of the time people would be scared to talk on those but me and my companions would always try to talk on the jeepneys to everyone that was really quiet and then they also have buses which their buses don't have air conditioning typically some do but those are expensive you just they just ride to and from a city and we could get it free on like Thursday nights. So you just like hop on and then you just walk up to the front and like when you're done, you just say, hey, I want to stop here and they stop and you get off and it's fine. To get off of a jeepney, you have to get your coins because you have like your pamasahe or your money for fare. And you like rap because they have this bar overhead and you like rap on the bar and it's like ding, 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 ding. And then they stop and that's how we would get around. It was fun. Oh my goodness. Valencia. Negros in the Philippines is probably the most beautiful place on earth. It is up in the mountains, a little bit away from the city, and people just call it utopia. It's just like, they call it the Garden of Eden because literally every single tree in Valencia is a fruit tree. It's like a different fruit. They have mangoes and lanzones and rambutan and lychee and just everything you can think of is is up in those trees and so so you get up into the to the city center and and it's like set up like a grid and that was the first time I've se I had seen that in my mission and it was really very neat very clean wide roads and very green everything is just plants and plants and they have like this huge garden festival half of the year I feel and there's just plants in the in the town plaza there's like tennis courts and basketball courts and a huge park in the middle of of the city but the, obviously the best part of Valencia is the people there's there's honestly something different about them there they are everyone is so so kind and when you when when you walk down the street they're the ones that greet you they say good morning my own hapon or my own buntag my own hapon and um and it's just i felt like i was in a dream when i first got there because there was just really just palm like coconut trees everywhere and and like cows and kalabao which is like a big buffalo looking animal and um, and then there's like bamboo houses and cement houses and the church is at the very very top of the town and it just it's on top like this green hill and it just glows there Valencia is just incredible I I could live there someday honestly because it's so comfortable, it's so safe, it's so nice, like everyone's so kind. The common professions in Valencia, I think people, like in the, all of the Philippines, lots of men do construction or, or um, tricycle driver and, um, and they, it's like a motorcycle with a cab on the side and they, there's like a terminal in the town center and when people want to get somewhere they go to the terminal and then <laughs> all of the people try to get you to get a ride on theirs and so everyone's like over here over here over here and they all like decorate it a different way and so there's like the tricycad and then there's um um there's like something called 
Habal Habal, which is uh, a motorcycle. And it's really funny because in order to fit more passengers onto their car or onto their motorcycle, they like weld on this extra long seat onto the back. So sometimes you'll see this motor that's like this big and then it's like triple the size with the seats in the back and there's like six people on the back. <laughs> it's really funny. It's a, a funny scene to see. But uh, every time I tell somebody that's going to the Philippines or every time somebody tells me they're going to the Philippines, I tell them they should go to Valencia because it's there's like waterfalls and and rivers and there's like a water park up there in the middle of the mountains and it's just so pretty and I I think about it all the time honestly when I think of the Philippines I think that Valencia captures it really well so so San Jose is located on the island of Mindoro um, and is my favorite place in <laughs> my mission um, what was so neat about it was that again it's 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 uh, I would go to sleep and I was sleeping under the stars you know and then I would you know wake up and wake up to the sound of the beach you know and it was like a really like unreal experience but at the same time it's it's not the same kind of, of beach that perhaps we're used to because people literally live right on the ocean you know and so you've got people that um are fishing um and you've got like diapers floating around in the water and stuff like that so it's kind of an interesting place but it's beautiful and wonderful again because it's kind of an island um when when there are floods or when there's a lot of rain and there's a rainy season um which would be the equivalent of, of a winter in places that aren't so um hot um again there's a lot of flooding and so um I remember uh, hiking up my my pants as high as they could go and just trekking around in in you know thigh deep water to go and, and preach the gospel and um, and that was a really neat and rewarding experience for me. Um, San Jose um, is unique in its um, I I want to say almost a, a tourist kind of a, an appeal. Um, they've got some resorts where you know a lot of white people will come and and eat and so when the mission president or you know some of the senior couples come to visit um they may like take the missionaries out to dinner and they'll you know go to a nice place and eat and and that's unique um but really cool at the same time um a lot of walking um you can you can um, pay to have uh, a trike come and take you wherever you need to go. Um, trikes are, are, at least for San Jose, the best way to go. There, there's a couple of different ways that you can do transportation in the big cities. They've got buses and jeepneys and trikes. Um, but in San Jose, um, because it's, it's such a small place you don't see a lot of jeepneys and, and you really wouldn't take one anywhere. So, if you are going to take public transportation, you're going to hire a trike. Um, if you have somebody with you, you can cram two people into the side compartment. A trike, let me let me define what a trike is for those that don't know what a trike is. So a trike is like a World War II motorcycle with a little egg compartment on the side. Not like one of the ones in the cartoons where it's like open air kind of a thing and you wear goggles and ride around on it, you know, but it's like, it's more like a compartment and it may even have like a little door. Um, and so you'll go in there, you can fit two Filipinos in there, one and a half Americans. Um, so, <laughs> so either be ready to squish or, you know, that's great. Um, I think the most I've seen people cram on a trike is like five people. They get very creative in the Philippines. Um, but sometimes one person will ride um, behind the motorcyclist and then a couple of other people will ride on the compartment and so you're going to use trikes or you're going to walk um, and you'll do a lot of walking in Mindoro. Um, so invest in some good shoes. I went through eight pairs. Um, so yep, you'll walk a lot um, and then it, it's one of those places where because it's so pastoral um, you have 
investigators that are living in, in these kind of like cool little bamboo huts and stuff like that. And it's beautiful and wonderful. I, I can't forget some of those really neat experiences where I've met some of those people. Um, the people there are so friendly and kind. Um, everybody says that about the Philippines, but that's not always the case, particularly in the city. But in Mindoro, people are, are very friendly and very kind um, and um, will uh, are, are always smiling, always ready and willing to talk. They're happy people. And so it makes sense um, for them to to accept the gospel because because they're already happy and they and they already have that element of truth and it rings true with them when they hear something that that makes as much sense as the gospel does um they have some of the best um little like bread treats that you've ever had they're like super good they they make it with this thing called ube which is a root um that's purple and it looks like it, it's just really good um, so they've got that. They've got some fantastic fish in San Jose. Um, I have a story. They also have some really great knives. Um, the Philippines um, is uh, culturally a really interesting place because um, that's kind of that's one of the areas in the world where historically they were headhunters um, and and just some really really cool like cultural history um, that's unique to the Philippines. That's also where Magellan died was in the Philippines. Um, they've got some great songs about that. So, so in Mindoro, uh, that's where I got what's called a butterfly knife. Butterfly knife is a really unique and cool tool that is uh, special to the Philippines. I'm pretty sure that's where it originated. The story was that when, um, when Spain took over the Philippines and Fili the Filipinos were fighting for their independence, um, the unique thing about a butterfly knife is that it looks like a stick it's kind of like a switchblade, only you have to like flip it open and fly it out. So it's it's really cool. The handle closes around the blade and then opens up again, and you can hold it. Um, and so there's different unique ways of opening it and all sorts of nifty tricks. Anyways, when I got my butterfly knife in the Philippines, I bumped into someone who was selling some, and I asked them for him. He said he was out, but that he would swing by our place and deliver the butterfly knife. And when I got it. I thought I was pretty good at, you know, flipping it open and back and forth and stuff like that. When I opened it up for the very first time, I chopped open my finger and I still have a scar. And what was really funny is that they haggle over there. So here I am bleeding and he's like, oh no, no, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, oh, it's so sharp. And he's like, well, I'll only sell it to you for a hundred pesos cheaper. And I'm saying, oh no, I don't know. And so it's like the more I bled, the less expensive the knife got. It was a pretty great experience. Uh, they're great. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, those are some really neat things about San Jose. Um, that was one of the areas where, where they had um, a branch that I was very close to. Not a lot of people play the piano, um, and frankly, I don't, but I did there. So it was fine, you know, I, I, I was able to play the melody line and figure out the bass, and, uh, and that was great. Um, in the Philippines, you will meet some people who are better singers than you've ever heard. Um, you will also hear a lot of people, and, and the reason why is because they love to sing. Filipinos love to sing. So whether they can sing or not, they will sing. Um, so you will hear some really, really great singers, and you will hear some terrible singers. But they're all happy to be singing, and that's one of the things that I love about it. Um, so Mindoro um, kind of has that, that element to it. Um, it's a place where people are... are are happy and um, proud to be Filipino again because it, it's an island in a third world country there there is an element of poverty that you will come across um, and a lot of questions that I ended up asking uh, answering on my mission were questions like well if God loves all of us equally why do you come from America and live in a house and I live in this bamboo shack um, and so um, Coming to understand how Heavenly Father gives all of His children an equal chance to grow and progress and, um, and being able to answer and empathize with them is a really important aspect, um, particularly of, of that area in San Jose. Um, I think those are some, some key facts about the area that would be good to know. 
Bacolod City is is an Ilongo city. It's um, that's the main language of, of Bacolod City. I spent about six months there as well. Um, that was the well, it may have been the largest city. I'm not sure which is bigger, Bacolod or Ilo, or Iloilo. Iloilo is on a, a different island. It's on the island of Panay, and now it's in its own mission. Um, but uh, Bacolod City was a, quite a, a large city. Um, they had a lot of the the modern conveniences. I lived uh, on the third floor of an apartment building, um, and we covered. Two Two areas, uh, well, a ward and a branch, um, Magsungai and uh, the Bacola Third Ward. And uh, I was zone leader at the time, and, and so I got to work um, in a number of areas throughout the, the city, working with the other missionaries in, in the zone. Um, and I was in charge of finances, so I spent some time in the office as well, dealing with the financial end of things for the zone. The city was very different. Uh, in the, the more rural areas, you could walk everywhere. Um, it didn't take long to get from place to place, even on public transportation. In the city, it would take a very long time to ride the public transportation just to get a, a few blocks away. Um, the routes were set and they were slow and because they would stop and pick up anybody that wanted to be picked up and they were dropping people off at every corner or you know in between. Uh, when you ride on the jeepney and you want to get off, you just bang on the roof and say, we're getting off. And they stop, you pay and you get off. If you want to catch a ride, you just flag them down and they stop and pick you up. So it, it can take quite a while to get anywhere. Um, that slowed us down quite a bit. Um, most of the people in the city lived in uh, cement homes, uh, apartment buildings, things like that. The poorer people, there are squatter areas uh, where people would just build with whatever they could. Uh, we taught in a home that was right next to a sewage canal uh, that was made out of cardboard boxes, uh, sheet metal, anything they could find and, and put together. Uh, the air was so bad that if you got a cut, it would become highly infected just from the air in the area. So. It was not a really pleasant place, um, so you had a nice a mix of of really low quality living standards and then everything up to very nice. Uh, we had some members that were quite well off and uh, lived in nice gated homes, and it was it was quite a con contrast. They don't really have you know sites and places to go and things like that. Um, the plazas are about as good as it gets, and you know they they don't. It's not like other countries where we have landmarks, things to go look at, things to go do. As a tourist, there really wouldn't be much to do or much to see. Um, you could go look at, you know, they do have some old buildings, old architecture. Um, in uh, one of my areas, there was a cathedral or a, a Catholic church that dated back about it's between four and six hundred years. Um, so they do have some old architecture. They were ruled by the Spanish for about four hundred years. And so there's some some strong Spanish influence and you can see that in some of the architecture. But it's not really a, a touristy place. Um, everyone just does their own thing. They go about their business and their life and that's pretty much it. Things most people live in over there, at least in the areas where I served, a lot of bamboo and wooden houses, uh, NEPA houses. There's quite a few houses over there. They're also made of cement. Uh, they call them hollow blocks just because they're really easy to make, but they're really, really crappy quality because they'll make them like a couple hundred in a day and leave them out in the sun for weeks and they'll crack and lose bits and pieces of the block until it weighs like a pound two or two lighter than when it was originally compacted and pressed to make the original hollow block and they could fall off at any time. The carpenters and people over there that work like construction and stuff, they're really good with their hands. They'll make beams and stuff to climb on out of any wood or any material that they can literally get and just go to work. Uh, they get paid per day, not per hour. Um, so like if you wanted a house over there and you wanted to hire some random people that knew how to do something like that, mix cement and do a stuff good, you'd pay them 10 bucks a day instead of over here where it's like, I don't know how much an hour like that but that's that's how they live um the food over there is incredible my mission was known for a spice uh favorite dishes were adobo which is just a meat dish um pork vinegar soy sauce bay leaf and of course you eat everything with rice that's a really good dish it's the main dish that's well known in the country that everybody knows and loves beagle express that's what my mission was known for it's the probably one of the spiciest dishes i've ever eaten in my life it was really spicy. It's a veggie dish that has a teeny bit of meat and rice. Uh, it's, um, the vegetable that's in it looks like puke colored green with little itty bitty peppers about that big sticking out of it. And those peppers are spicy. Don't try and eat one whole. Uh, you'll be half hour later, you'll still be feeling the burn. 
in your mouth and down your throat. Um, sugar, a really good way to get rid of that. Or if you have a really hot broth, like if you're eating something at a restaurant and you have broth, it's called sabao, you'll just ask for some of the little pepper, it's called sili, just cut it up, toss it in there, mix it up a little bit and just sip on that. Helps get rid of your like throat and mouth burn from something spicy really well. Some of the beaches over there that I went to were pretty nice. Um, some of them are white sandy beaches. The water over there is really clear depending on where you go. Um, let's see what else. Uh, another city I would possibly recommend, like if you want to know about it, uh, Diet. It's the capital of the northern province in my mission. Uh, the phrase in our mission that everybody knows is, if you're in Diet, try it. You know, thing like that. Because er anybody that goes to Diet Zone has a pretty fun time up there because you've got Alvino's up there, which is just a restaurant where you eat everything with your hands. Uh, they have really, really good shakes there. They have three 7-Elevens in that city. They have a lot of photo shops if you wanted to print paper. Um, pretty close to Diet is a place called Bagusbus Beach. And that's actually a really, really fun place to go to. If you ever go there, go to the restaurant called Catherine's or the Beach House or something like that. I think is what it's called, the Lighthouse something along those lines that's really good. It's American food, you know, American priced as well, but it's really good. Don't pay attention to the music that they blast because it's always dirty and disgusting American music, like rap stuff. It's, uh, it's not very good. Um, uh, depending on what areas you go, there's gonna be lots of rice fields. My third area wasn't very much rice field in the mainland, but the farther you got out and went across the harbor into the island area, it was more and more rice fields tons of palm trees and coconut trees everywhere you can literally pick up a coconut off the ground if you have a machete or someone close by that has one cut it open and just drink it as you walk no one's gonna care and it's super healthy for you it helps clean out your kidney kidneys real good has it so your organs and stuff on inside function really well because it's got a lot of good stuff in it for you and after you drink all the juice split it open and eat the husk and the flesh on the inside it's really good i didn't like coconut before my mission but I love coconut now. Like if there's a coconut and something like this or whatever, I'll eat it because it's just super, super healthy for you. I've heard stories of like elders getting robbed and stuff like that. So just like uh, be really careful um, like with where you live, like follow what it says in the mission handbook, travel in lighted areas, vary the routes and paths you take to get to your house and stuff like that. If you have someone drop you off, uh, try and walk a little ways to your house and stuff like that. I mean, you stick out like a sore thumb over there, you're in white shirts and ties. Or if you're a sister, I mean, you're a full head or two taller than the people over there. Their average height is about five feet in lower. I mean, there are some tall Filipinos over there, but um, it's, it's a pretty fun place to live. My mission was the best. Uh, of course, I'm saying that's totally biased on my part because I didn't serve anywhere else but I wouldn't have picked another place to serve. Um, all of it was just really, really great, and I loved it there.